Support for the Couples Council comes from Mercier Wellness and Consulting. Their purpose is to equip you with the right skills for a happy and healthy relationship. Services available in office or virtual. Schedule your consultations now. For more information, visit mercierwellness.com. Mercier Wellness and Consulting. Small steps, big changes. This podcast is not a substitute for therapy. Please consult a licensed professional for your mental health needs. Now on with with the the show. show. Hello and welcome to the Couples Council. I'm Dr. James M. Mercier, licensed clinical social worker, and we're continuing our conversation this month about fathers. Like we said in our first uh, episode this month, we are turning the month of June into Father's Day month. We spoke with Matthew Jean last time about his experience becoming a dad, going from one to four after his wife had triplets and so um, as you can tell I'm riding solo today Um, but uh, while you don't hear her Dean on on this recording uh, she's very much part of the uh, production of this episode as a matter of fact she and uh, this next guest they have a relationship they're friends Um, we know them well And uh, he actually calls her uh, boss lady. Who are we talking about? Well, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk with Mr. Tracy Martin. He is the father of slain teenager uh, Trayvon Martin. During this episode, Mr. Uh, Martin, he talks about the loss of his son. Uh, He talks about being a father he actually alludes to the fact that he had more than just Trayvon and his brother. Uh, he had six kids and he was a father before we even knew he was a father. We talk about uh, his experience of grieving the loss of his son while still having to find find some way to continue going um, for the rest of his kids. Mr. Martin, he is an activist, he is a speaker, and he's an author, having co-authored the book uh, with Sabrina Fulton, his ex-wife, Rest in Power, The Enduring Life of Trayvon Martin. This conversation with Mr. Tracy Martin was, um, we just couldn't stop, and we went well over time. So you are going to be hearing the first part of a two-part episode uh, with Mr. Tracy Martin. Without further ado, Mr. Tracy Martin. Mr. Tracy Martin. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Couples Council. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Dr. Jameson. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. First, just let me start off by thanking you for taking the time to uh, join us. Um, this month, we are talking to Black fathers. We are celebrating fathers. Uh, Father's Day is coming up, uh, if it's, if not already. The way I see it, June is Father's Day month, is what month exactly is what we've been saying. I was talking to another brother, and uh, we talked about how everything gets turned around for Mother's Day, mm-hmm. and for Father's Day we might get a little a little shelf, you know. <laughs> so I'm doing my part to highlight dads and the work that they're doing. Oh yeah. I mean, and it's always great to have dads uh, and the the work that they're doing, not only in their home, but in their communities. It's always great to have them highlighted um, because often, many times, uh, we get kind of lost in the shuffle uh, and and overlooked because it's just natural for dads to be uh, doing their part. And so uh, many people view it as, it's nothing out of the ordinary that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas with the, with the mothers, you know, they conceive, uh, they give birth to the children. And and so that's going above and beyond the call of duty. Um, but with, with dads, it's, you know, we are, we are, we were, we were ordained to take care of our children and pretty much uh, make sure, guide them through life. 
Yeah. And so, and so Father's Day is 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 not as a as big as Mother's Day, but to many fathers, it truly is a special day. It's a big deal, and you know, you mentioned the community. Um, you know, and we've talked. We have history. Uh, we've done some work together. Uh, you know, thank you uh, for the honor last year through Circle of Fathers and the uh, workshops that you do. The um, so we're not we're not strangers. Correct. Uh, and I think uh, I remember you talking about uh, coaching football in the community, and mm -hmm. so, you know when you talk about that, we're even talking about being a dad to the kids in the community who may not have their fathers in their homes. So in that regard, those surrogate fathers, you know, oh, yeah. they should be honored as well. Oh yeah, I know for a fact that um, through through youth sports, um, just being out um, involved with youth sports, we I see a lot of our young men that really don't uh, have a father figure in their lives. And so, uh, many times the coaches uh, end up becoming more than coaches. They become mentors, mm -hmm. they become stepfathers, they become that father figure in the old kids' life. And so um, <clears throat> it's, it's real important that, that, you know, we not only stay engaged in youth sports with our children, but uh, as, a, as a director of a program, I would like to see more participation from the, the biological fathers. Yeah. Uh, in the, with the kids. Okay. You know, a couple of years ago, I heard, I was at a, a conference for dads and one guy stood up and he said, it's, it's good as a father, as a man that you want to see your kids succeed. He says, but a real man wants everyone's kids to succeed. Exactly. And, and that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, um, we, when you when you look at what a what it means to be on the team, um, that concept is you know we're coming together, we're combining, we're, we're, we're uniting as one. And so, if one kid is a superstar, that means all kids should be superstars that that mm -hmm. you know, that are participating. And so, and we do our very best to make sure that um, no kid is given. Uh, uh, more attention than the others unless we're trying to enhance that kid to get his skills up to par with the rest of the kids. Yeah. Those are the kids. Those are the kids that need that, that extra attention, the ones that uh, may lack, uh, um, lack the skill or the skill set or the talent as the kids that are naturally talented. And gotcha. So, yeah. yeah. So you were um, you were thrust or cast or thrown into the spotlight because of the death, the murder of your son, Trayvon. Correct. Now, and that's what the world has come to, that's how the world has come to know you. But before that, you were a dad. You know, you didn't become a dad after that. Um, you were a father, you were a husband, you have children, you had a life. And so tell us a little bit about your past and your journey to fatherhood. Uh, my, my, my journey to fatherhood started early. Um, I was one of those fathers that had a, had a child out of, um, coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, and so my, my oldest son, uh, I was very young when, when uh, me and his mom uh, just had him. And, uh, and for me, that was a rough time. It was a rough time in my life because as a, as a child, you know, you're still being nurtured by your mother or your father. Uh, and here it is, you bring a child into the world, and, and now your whole life changes. Mm -hmm. um, often we are, as, as men, uh, or as young, young boys, young men, we often don't, don't understand the ramification of being an adult. But once you've, once you've stepped into fatherhood, as a young man, as a 16, 15, 16, 17 year old man, mm. the whole world changes. Oh, that's real. Now, yeah, it's real. Because now it's not only about you and your parents looking after you. Now it's about you being a man, stepping into manhood, taking care of your responsibilities. And so that's where the baton, that's where the baton usually gets lost at in our communities. Mm. Um, we're quick to say, you know, hey, he's grown, he's on his own, let him do his thing. But 
that's where the baton gets lost. Instead of nurturing our young men to become great fathers, we let them venture out on their own and do their own thing. And so with me, um, I grew up with my mother and I, I was, I'm the youngest of four boys. And so by me, uh, I was, you know, at the time, you know, I had uh, my two older brothers, they were in their mid twenties and uh, one brother right over me, he was in the military. He was, he's three, four years older than me. Um, for them to say, you know, my youngest brother has the first child, the first dog, the first offspring. Um, that was kind of devastating to them. Okay. Um, but, but here I was, 15 years old, and and you know, this is my mother's, this is my mother's first grandchild, and and so um, that that kind of changed the narrative on, you know, that kind of that was the narrative change from me being the youngest boy to mm. me being a man now. And so uh, I didn't, you know, I, I really had nobody to nurture me on, on, you know, hey, you know, besides my friends, you know, on, on how to raise uh, a, a, a young son. And I, it was a rough patch, and me and the mother ended up breaking up, and, you know, we were back and forth, and it was just, it was a bad relationship. Okay. Um, and I didn't really, I really didn't get to, uh, create a bond with with my oldest son until until I was, until he was about ten years old, and though you know ten years that was ten years that I had lost, and you wow. know and it was ten years that I lost and I could never get it back. Um, and so we end up you know we 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 built a relationship uh, through my through my uh, growth, and and so. Um, I waited a little bit until my until I got married to decide to have my my my, my next child, which was actually Trayvon. Um, but me and Miss Fulton, we did you know when when I when I got involved with Miss Fulton, uh, Javaris was was actually two years old, um, and so I'm I'm actually the only father that he known. From you know, from his from his early age, mm. uh, and so um, I, I never tried to. I knew what it was like not to have your biological father in your life. As I did it ten years with my son. Okay. And so and so, I encouraged him to have a relationship with his father, even though I was the one that he was considering as his father. Did so you did. did did you grow up with your father in the home? Um, I, it was a split home. Uh, my, my, I, I did have a relationship with my father. Okay. Uh, I, I, I grew up, I was born in, in Miami, but of course I was raised in the Midwest. Uh, my mother, my mother, um, lived in the Midwest and my father lived in, in, in Miami. And so the summers I would come visit my dad and, um, we had a relationship, but it was, it was as as a young man, as a teenager, I was a little bitter. I was upset that, and I felt that um, he should have been doing more, which he probably was doing more. Um, but but my, you know, going off of what my mother was telling us and what she was saying, I just felt as he wasn't doing enough to establish a great relationship between mm -hmm. he and I. I see, I see, and so you could understand that with the. With your kids, with you said your uh, my oldest, yes, your oldest. right, right, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and and it's just, it's funny, it's funny how God works because um, that ten year that ten year gap between me and my my oldest son um, actually made me the father of what I am, who I am today. Because you know, I I, I looked at it, I looked at the relationship he and I had, and I looked at the relationship my father and myself had, and I said, you know, if, if I'm not there to guide him, you know, who's going to guide him? Mm. And I just, I, I'm not saying that my father didn't uh, have that influential uh, or that bond with me. We had a bond, but it was kind of, it was a, it was a, a, a obstacle in a way. And that obstacle to me was my mother because what, everything that my mother told me you know, I believed it. 
you know, yeah. and right. because I, you know, I'm the youngest boy and, and I grew up with her uh, and, you know, everything I wanted, she kind of gave to me. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I, I can recall telling my dad before my dad passed away, um, I can recall telling him, man, well, why, you, why, why didn't you ever send us Christmas gifts or not? Well, why hadn't why didn't you you know reach out to us on birthdays? And my father told me you know in, in, in so many ways I reached out to you every Christmas and every birthday. You know your mother just didn't say it was from me. Wow. And so, and so you know that that was that very I love my mother, man. I, I mean my mother was my best friend. Yeah. And, yeah. And you know I, it was like it was kind of it was kind of heartbreaking to know that. You know, it was the the hate between black parents, or or you know, but that hate is is truly, truly mm-hmm, tearing mm-hmm. us apart. Yeah, um, it's 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 common that when the relationship ends, then one one or the both of the parents they don't consider the relationship between the kids yeah. and those parents, and in the case of boys and their and their dads and black oh, yeah. boys especially. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's a vital relationship. Yeah. And so that, you know, and, and that 10 years, that 10 years of hate between me and my, uh, I'm not going to say hate, but in, in a sense, the 10 years of, of uh, regret between me and my oldest, um, it showed for a while, just like the, the years of, of regretness between my, me and my father it showed for a while. And so as I matured, I definitely didn't want that to impact the rest of my 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 fatherhood years moving forward with the rest of my, my you know my children and and um and so I, I encouraged Javaris to have a relationship with his dad. Once Trayvon was born, it was like, okay, here's a second chance to make mm-hmm. things right. Right. And Trayvon was born, and and he didn't leave my side, even even when. And I tell people this all the time: um, when the marriage went 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 bad between me and Miss Fulton, the the children didn't know that we were even separated. They didn't know that because we were separated. I had moved out the house, and I would come back to the house, and I would sleep. I, I can I can remember it like yesterday. The kids had bunk beds. And I would sleep, I would, I would come in the house, I would get in the bunk beds with the kids, they would see me get up to work, go to, go to work in the morning, and I would leave. They, met, they didn't know that we were divorced because <clears throat> we had made a, we had, we, we, we actually had a conversation where we weren't going to let our divorce play a role in, you know, our kids' future. And so, um, it was a it was a while before the kids knew that hey you know you know my mama and daddy's not together no more. Okay. But we always remain we always maintained a good relationship. Good. That that's important. And I mean, maybe it wasn't in those ten years that you realize that, but that yeah. is one thing. If fathers, um, I hope they take away with that that we don't want the relationship with the kids to suffer just because the relationship. The relationship has ended. That's yeah, uh, correct. Take away. Yeah. Um, so after Trayvon, you had you you had a couple more more children. Your fatherhood. Well, yeah. Uh, let, let me explain something. <laughs> it's funny when I say I have six. Um, I, I I I consider um, Javaris as one of mine, even though he's not my biological child. Oh, I understand, man. And, listen, and listen, so, full, full, full disclosure, we do that here too. You know? yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, there's a bunch of kids who in my house, in my community, who they they tell me I'm like their dad, and I treat mm-hmm. them like my kids, like my babies. So um, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, I, I like telling guys all the time, listen, if you, if you, uh, start a relationship um, with a young lady, uh, no matter how old you are, no matter how old the young lady is, uh, and, and, and you plan on ha- um, having a commitment to that young lady, and that relationship is going to go for 5, 10, 15 years, 
you not only start a relationship with her, you start a relationship with her children as well, and vice versa. And so, yes, you, I mean, that's, 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 that's the nature of the beast. You don't go into a relationship saying, I'm in a relationship with this young lady. No, I'm in a relationship with her and her children. Mm -hmm. And you can build from that. Yeah, it's a package uh, deal, man. Yeah, it's a package deal. It's definitely a package deal. Uh, and so, um, so, so after Trayvon and, and, and the divorce, um, you know, that was, he, Trayvon was, was the, to me, he was the child that, uh, he wouldn't let go. Um, he knew that Trayvon said, tried every, everything every day. Um, he'd ask, when you and mama getting back together? Even after I had, been, even after I had remarried, uh, he was like, when my mom was still getting back together. And so, you know, he, he, you know, he just, he wanted to see, uh, he wanted to see, he didn't want the family to be separated, but, um, you know, and, and when, you, when you, when you marry, you plan to be together for, uh, you know, for eternity and just unfortunate things happen. And, um, right. I'm not, I'm, you know, I can, I can truly say it was just a, uh, it was just different lifestyles uh, with, with the separation of me and Miss Fulton. Yeah. I was young. I was, you know, I was, I was in the sports. And so I did a lot of traveling with, with playing, playing amateur sports. And so um, she was just more of a stay home and, you know, uh, do her work, do her school. She was, she was, you know, she was off in the school. And so, um, that kind of played a part. Me, me leaving the house, being on the road a lot. That kind of played a part. I um, imagine. I can in the, imagine in the relationship. And so, um, I, you know, I, I try not. I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm as transparent as you know a person can be. And so, during this conversation, I, I, and I tell people all the time, I'm not perfect. And so, I've been married. I'm on my third marriage, okay. which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so after Miss Fulton, I was married to another young lady. Uh, we didn't have any kids together, but then again, her kids were my kids and my kids were her kids. Um, and nice. we were together, me and this young lady, we were together for the, for probably about 14 years. Uh, and, you know, again, our differences just set us apart. Uh, this was actually a young lady who I was, uh, I was still legally married to at the time of Trayvon's death. I was legally married to her, but we had been separated for for about two years prior to uh, Trayvon's death. Um, and so, um, w once uh, once his death uh, happened, um, the young lady once she tried to really like. Uh, build a bond back together, but you know it had it was it was a, it was the relationship had been damaged, mm -hmm. um, and that relationship actually uh, was damaged due to the fact of jealousy, um, and and when I say jealousy, I mean I don't mean it in a bad way, but she was jealous of the relationship that I had with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And, yeah, as, played, as, their, as their father. Yes. She that, that played a huge role because she felt as though I gave too much attention to my kids. And as a father, I feel I feel as though uh, my children are my first priority. Um, I, even though I'm married, my children are my first priority. Um, and when it when it comes to my when it comes to um, if I if I should pass. Uh, who's going to get my inheritance? My children are my first priority because I, I you know, I want, I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the support, I'm their support system. And so if something happens to me, I want to make sure that my children inherit something so they won't have to worry. It. They can build from what right. I give them. Right. You give them a foundation. Yeah. They have a foundation. And, and so she wasn't really okay with that. She was, she was in a place where, she felt as though, you know, if something happened to me, let her make the decision on where the resources go. And to me, that just wasn't, that didn't sit well with me. And so, you know, it, it was, it was a, it was a situation where I was the, 
Uh, I was the uh, breadwinner of the home. I took care of all of the bills and and I just felt as though uh, by me doing certain things within the household, it shouldn't have been an issue where, you know, how I wanted to take care of my kids. Okay. And, you know, and so it was just a strain, you know, it was a, it was a back and constant back and forth about, you know, my kids and her kids. And, and so, and the, and the kids, they, they were fine with each other. You know, they were fine with each other. Um, but on the outside, that just, that, that kind of tore us apart. And so during that relationship, um, I did kind of venture out of that relationship. Uh, well, early on in the relationship, and I had two children, um, I had two kids um, in that relationship that, and, 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 and I, I'm not going to use the strain of the relationship as an excuse. It was something that I chose to go out and do. Mm-hmm. Um, and my, my, my only daughter, uh, Takira, she was, she's after Trayvon. She was the first to be born. And, uh, my, my next son, um, Demetrius, he was born eight, nine months after her. And so it was a, you know, it was, it was, it was a part where I was going out doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, but as a father, I don't regret uh, bringing those kids into this world. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear you say that because no matter what it is, you know the kids are not are not the problem. Correct. You know, kids yeah. are, are blessings. Yep. And so, um, uh, you know, and so after 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 my after my son Demetrius was born, uh, I kind of said, well, you know, uh, that's that's enough with the kids. Mm-hmm. So. So by now I got Takira, Demetrius, Trayvon, Javaris, Darkell. Um, and so um, and, and so I, I'm saying I'm you know, I'm relatively young, still young, and I got five kids and and I have a relationship with all of my kids at this point. I have a great relationship with them and 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 so I'm I'm at a good place in my life with these kids and, and you see me, you see my, you see my kids with me, no matter where I was going, you know, I, it wasn't a, a point where I'm going to take these two kids with me this week. I'm going to take these two kids with me the other week. No, my kids were, were where I laid my head, my kids were there. Mm, um, nice. and so, um, my oldest kid, he was still in Illinois with his, he was uh, uh, still in, in the Midwest with his parents. And so we communicated, on a daily basis, though, and so moving, moving fast forward to 2000 and, uh, 2011 is where I met my now wife. No, 2010 is where I, I met my um, my wife now, um, Brandy, who um, we had a long distance relationship. She was from the Orlando area, and we 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 met. Uh, we met in Orlando, and we started first. We started off just phone conversation, um, and then it started getting well. We need to see each other, and so we would. I remember we would meet each other in Fort, Fort Pierce. We would call that the halfway mark, and so the more we met, it seemed like we started meeting each other every week, uh, and, and so the relationship got kind of serious, um, and. For, for about a year and a half, uh, we we did see each other. We called it a relationship. She would come down and visit on the weekends. I would go up and visit on the weekends. Um, 2012, um, we were discussing, uh, well, 2000, the end of 2011, we were discussing her moving down to uh, the, the South Florida area. Um, and so in, in February 2012, um, that when the incident, when the accident occurred, that took Trayvon's life, right. uh, that kind of that changed not only my life, it changed her life as well. Uh, and, and so she stayed up there, and, and we've we we we've always joked about, you know, it's an age difference between me and her. Uh, it's about a, a twelve year age age gap, and. <laughs> She would always, you know, early on in the relationship, she would always joke about, 
having a child by an old man. And, <laughs> and I, at this point, I thought, you know, uh, I thought that, you know, I was done with having kids. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I always say that God worked in mysterious ways uh, for Trayvon to be taken February 12th, I mean, I'm sorry, February 26, 2012. Um, he was taken away from us that day. And around March or April of 2012, um, Brandy was telling me that she thought that she was pregnant. Wow. And for a while, I thought that it was, I was like, man, you know, it's just bad timing. I honestly thought it was bad timing because of uh, all the media. Um, the first thing, the first thing, first and foremost, the first, the most important thing was the fact that, you know, my son had just got killed and we were, uh, we were in the media discussing, mm -hmm. you know, everything and, and they were trying to uh, expose the bad part of our lives. And so, um, I had, I was dealing with the fact that I was in November of 2011, the divorce, you know, it was a holdup on the divorce of my previous wife. And now you're talking about, you know, being in the media, conceiving another child right. on the heels of the death of another child. Right, right. So, so that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot, of, a lot of pressure. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure. And, and, um, Brandy had asked me several times, uh, do you want me to have an abortion? And and I just kept saying, you know, hold on, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it. And by the time, you know, and, and here it is three, four months later, and I'm still saying we'll talk about it. But, you know, I, I never really focused on it. Um, I, I didn't, I, I never believed in abortions. Because um, like I said, you know, you, you, you know, kids are a blessing. Mm hmm um, it's just that the timing of this child it wasn't was, convenient. It wasn't, it wasn't convenient at all. And, you know, I had my lawyer saying, hey, we can't let this get out in the media. And as a father, you know, as a, as a, not as a father, but as a, as a, at the time, as a uh, boyfriend of Brandy's, I, my, my feeling was how, how would I make her feel? How am I making her feeling by saying, you know, I'm not gonna say that my girlfriend's pregnant, like and I so I refused. A lot of I refused to, Yeah, I refused to even uh, entertain what what uh, my attorneys were saying, um, and so you know that I, I let her. I told her to put on her uh, put on her maternity clothes and let's go out in the public, let everybody see. You know, I, it's, I'm not gonna hide it. Good. And, and it, it was a lot of scrutiny behind it because people of course, were, of course, yeah, people were saying, you know, uh, his son just died and he just had another baby. You know, it was a lot of scrutiny. But you know, at that point, I, you know, this is my family. You know, right. so I understand, I understand the magnitude of what I've lost. But at the same time, God has blessed me with another another seed, and yeah. so. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad you say that because that's a that's that's a very uh, difficult place to be in, yes. where you've lost a child, but you still have other kids, and in this case, you have a brand new kid that you have to continue to live for. Yeah, that's the and, and you know that's through this whole ordeal. Um, that's one of the main things that people don't realize. People. People have failed to realize that there are other ch uh, kids in this uh, in this situation. Uh, there, there are the, I do have other kids, um, and the only kid you know that they really can relate to besides Trayvon is Javaris because right. he's always in this fortune. And so somebody asked me why 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 don't your other kids be? I, my kids were younger. The other kids were younger than Trayvon, and they were they were affected. Tremendously by his death, mm -hmm. they were. I mean, my, my kids, my daughter, her grades were her grades just start slipping. Uh, my my other son, my younger son Demetrius, his grades start slipping. So they were going, they were in a downward spiral. So they as a great. father, I had to, yeah, as a father, I had to do what I had to do to protect them from, you know, from what was going on 
uh, in the media. Now, um, now, 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 let's talk about that a little bit, right? So you're grieving your loss of your son. Your kids are grieving the loss of their brother. How do you help them while you yourself are still grieving? What What did you do to to help you through that? Uh, I just I, honestly, uh, I, I really uh, enhanced my my spiritual relationship with God. You know, I enhanced my relationship to the point where, you know, I knew, I understand, I understood that I couldn't ask God why me. Mm. And, and I I started just you know my relationship with God just became that much stronger. My conversations with God. Uh, became that much stronger. My belief system became that much stronger. And so I started uh, really um, covering my, my, my kids from the spiritual aspect. Um, and, and, and and I started having more, uh, more detailed conversations of how we should bond as a family mm-hmm. and how, how, you know, and how the loss of one child is going to define who we are as a family. Um, and so I started nurturing them a lot and paying that much more attention to them and being more detailed with, with their everyday lives. And, and so that kind of helped me deal with it and deal with it. And, um, I did send my kids to counseling, but I've never went to counseling myself. Um, mm, that's interesting. That's interesting. Tell me yeah, about that. I mean, um, I'm, I just, I'm a counselor, so I got to ask. My thing is, I just felt as though I didn't, you know, as a father, I didn't need anybody to tell me what was wrong uh, or or how to grieve. But I knew that uh, professional help could help my t- children. Um, I, and to this day, I, I you know, I, I had a conversation with, 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 with my wife, Brandy, uh, about two weeks ago um, about going to a grief council. Mm-hmm. And 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 I keep telling her that the more I talk about it, the more uh, counseling that I'm receiving. It was it was very hard for me to actually talk about this, uh, talk about it in public, uh, because I was reliving it every day. Right, right. And so it was just the more I talked about it, the, the more the more comfortable I felt with Trayvon not coming back. And so that that kind of uh, that kind of not helped me heal, but it kind of got me in a place where I understood, I understood that um, the work that we were doing would, would help other kids uh, or other children make it home. And, and so it's not replacing Trayvon's life. It was just saving someone else's life. That, that really kind of got me through it. Right, and you know we've been able to watch that from a from a distance. Um, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it sounds like it was it was a trauma that you went through. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, there was this there was some dark days, and there still are dark days. Uh, it's just the fact that um, I, we've learned to accept. Uh, we've learned to accept God's will, and 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 now you know it's it's just about it's. You know, how can we move forward? How can we, how can we create a situation, a safe environment for other children? Um, and, and one thing I've always said, um, that one thing I've said, you know, for the last three, four years is that uh, it's not about Trayvon anymore. It's about the rest of our children. And ladies and gentlemen, that is where we're going to have to leave it for now. Be sure to tune in for next week's episode where you will hear the conclusion of my interview with Mr. Tracy Martin. Um, I can't tell you how honored I am that he uh, took the time out to sit with us and to share his experience. In the meantime, if you've not heard the first uh, episode of this series we're doing, go back and listen to the previous episode. Uh, The series is called Dad for Debt. All right, we're talking about confident dads. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Okay, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your feedback. We ask that you continue to engage with us. Okay, um, Dr. Jameson Mercier on social media um, or the Wife Mentor. Um, and as always, 
you know that if you just simply go to uh, merciawellness.com, it will take you straight. It will take you right where you need to go. Okay. As of right now, you can also go to the Couples Council Podcast dot com and you will have everything related to our podcast all right again thank you for listening and thank you for joining us for this episode Uh, we look forward to catching you next time for the next episode of the couples council bye now hey everybody thank you for listening to our mom and dad if you like them as much as we do then click subscribe and leave a comment but now they have to go because it's family time so go practice what you heard And we'll catch you on the next episode.